unlikely event of a bank failure, checking and savings accounts up to $250,000 enjoy the reliable protection of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC. But did you know that other products sold every day by your local bank are not insured by the FDIC? Welcome to Economics Made Simple. Your bank may be insured by the FDIC, but that doesn't mean every product available for purchase receives that protection. To help clarify all of this, we've brought in a special guest. Hello again, I'm glad to be back. Let's get into it. Thanks to the protection of the FDIC, deposit accounts such as checking and savings accounts are insured up to $250,000 per depositor per insured bank for each type of ownership category. FDIC protection of deposit accounts has proved ironclad over the years. Since the coverage began in 1934, no depositor has ever lost a penny of insured funds as a result of a bank failure. And sometimes when a bank fails, the government will decide it's appropriate to cover even uninsured deposit accounts, those greater than $250,000, although it's not legally required to do so. But what you may not know is that there's a whole array of products available for purchase inside the four walls of an FDIC-insured bank that are not actually FDIC-insured. Interesting. Can you provide some examples? Absolutely. Examples of these products include mutual funds, annuities, individual stocks, bond investments, U.S. Treasury instruments, and life insurance policies. These products may be presented to you over the phone, through the mail, online, or even in the lobby of your bank, but they are not insured bank products. Okay, in these cases, will it be easy for me to know that these aren't FDIC insured products? Well, it should be. The financial advisor with whom you're speaking is required to make certain disclosures, such as informing you that the product is not insured by the FDIC and that it's subject to investment risk and may lose principal. When you hear or read these kinds of declarations, it's a clear indication the product you're considering is not FDIC insured. Of course, if you're ever uncertain about whether a product enjoys FDIC protection, simply ask for clarification. Are there any other bank products not insured by the FDIC? Another common bank product that doesn't enjoy FDIC protection is a safe deposit box. Many people choose to keep cash, coins, physical precious metals, and other valuables in a bank safe deposit box because of the physical security those boxes can provide. But if the contents of the box are lost, stolen, or otherwise destroyed, FDIC insurance will not make it whole. Can I purchase a separate insurance policy to cover the contents of my safe deposit box? That's exactly what you would do, anticipating the fact that many safe deposit box owners will want to insure what they keep in those boxes. Some banks have arrangements with third-party companies that can insure the contents. In other cases, you would obtain the coverage on your own, perhaps as an endorsement to your existing homeowners or renter's insurance policy. What about if the bank fails? What happens to the valuables in my safe deposit box in that case? When a bank fails, chances are good it will be taken over in a timely fashion by another financial institution. In that case, access to your box effectively will remain uninterrupted. If it turns out the failed bank is not acquired by another institution, the FDIC will contact you about how to remove the contents of your box. Got it. So just because I purchase a product from inside an FDIC insured bank, that doesn't always mean the product is itself FDIC insured. Once again, Jane, thanks for that great information. Of course, I'm happy to help. Well, that's all for today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button and watch for more Economics Made Simple.